This is Mora's other bushcraft knife, the Cans Ball. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this knife, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, a few things. First, I want to thank Wild Med Kits for sending me the Cans Ball so that I could share it with you. So the quick backstory is I reached out to Wild Med Kits looking for this knife and they had, they replied that they were, weren't gonna carry it any longer. It was just something they had brought in for a short period of time, but they would be interested in sending me one of their other products, which turned out to be a really fantastic first aid kit, which I'll bring to you in another video but they threw this in just for me to have. So thank you to Wild Med Kits for sending this knife. Now, here's the rest of the backstory. Not so long ago, I released a video where I compared three of Mora's knives and declared the Bushcraft Black to be my favorite of the three. The three were, of course, the Bushcraft Black, the Heavy Duty Companion, and the Garberg. And if you're interested, that video will be linked at the end of this video. I didn't have the, the Cans Ball at the time, so I couldn't include it in the video. If I'd had it, trust me, I would have included it because a whole lot of you viewers said, Mark, what about the cans ball? You forgot the cans ball. No, I didn't forget it. I just didn't have it at the time. Now I have it. Now we'll talk about the cans ball and how it compares to the other three knives from Mora. All right, so what we're going to do is just come in a little bit closer. I'll go over the knife in a little bit of detail, not a whole lot, because of course I'll put all the specifications in the video description for your uh, reference, and then we'll do some demonstrations. All right, before we dive in and take a closer look at the cans ball, I want to share the sheath that it came with. This is the typical Mora sheath, hard plastic, but it is an upgrade from some of the older style in that it is reversible for left hand or right hand carry whatever your preference is so right now if I drop it in this direction set up secure for right hand carry take it out turn the knife around set up and secure for left hand carry so that works out great very much identical to the Garberg sheath in fact if you have the Garberg and you have the multi-mount system you can use it on this sheath as well all right let's just drop the sheath out of the way I want to quickly go over the specifications for this knife but like I said they'll all be in the video description below so overall length 10.47 inches 226 millimeters blade length 4.2 to nine inches, 109 millimeters. Blade thickness, and this is significant, 0 0.09 eighths of an inch or 2.5 millimeters. So this is thinner than all the other knives that I consider, well, bushcraft knives. You know, that's not entirely true. The regular companion is the same thickness as this and it works. I just wanted to point out this is thinner than the other knives I'm going to be sharing with you today. Weight, 4.7 ounces, 134 grams steel, the typical Sandvix 12C27MOV stainless steel. And I just recently read on Mora's website, not sure how I missed it before, is they recycle their steel. So if they're in production and they have a lot of leftover pieces, they just go back into the melting pot so they're not wasting any. That's environmentally very responsible, of course. The handle material is the hard plastic TPE with a rubber over mold, so right along here, it's hard plastic, but all along here, it is a softer rubber, making for good traction, really good feel in the hand, but we'll talk more about that in a few minutes. Now, I want to point out that this is not my first introduction to this style of knife. What do I mean by that? I already owned the Mora Outdoor 2000. I've had this for a lot of years. This has been retired in favor of the Cans Ball, so it is the ancestor, the forerunner, if you will, of the Cans Ball almost identical. As you can see from the blade design, really there's not a lot of difference, but what I'll tell you what the differences are between the two first and then I'll put the more Outdoor 2000 away. First off you can see the obvious is the handle. The handle is different. This is very comfortable in the hand and works very well. Again hard plastic with a rubber over mold that carry that over. But the other thing is is the fit and finish on the 2000. Look how shiny the stainless steel is. There's no brush marks. This was finished right down to a mirror polish and the spine is rounded as well. So this indicates a higher level of finish for this knife over some of the more, uh, I don't want to call them low class, but entry level working knives that Mora had as well. All right, let's put the 2000 aside. So what makes this so unique from the other knives is the fact that it has what's known as a dual grind. Now it is Scandi all the way down. You can see the Scandi starts back here where the blade is at its full thickness. That same Scandi continues right forward to the tip but what they've done just past the halfway mark out is they started to thin the blade out. And you can see that. Now, you can probably see it in this dimension as well. 
thicker up to about here, and then it starts to thin out towards the tip. Okay, so what is the benefit of that? Slicey, and I'm, I'll demonstrate just how slicey this is. Because, well, we'll start with 2.5 millimeters. It's a thin blade to begin with, already thinner than, say, the Garberg or the Bushcraft Black or the Heavy Duty Companion. So it's already going to be more slicey, and I guess that's the best word I can use. But when you get even thinner towards this end of the knife, it's going to be even slicier. I think people are probably starting to see a one of the shortcomings with this knife in that respect. It's not anywhere near as strong out at the end of the blade as the other knives are. And that's not to say it's not strong enough, as you'll see in a moment, but it is thinner. They have made up to that, or made up for that so, to a certain degree by making it thicker from spine to edge. So it's thicker in this dimension than any of the other knives, except maybe the Garberg. It may be about the same. We'll, we'll bring it in for comparison in a minute. You can see there's a small drop point and pretty good tip. Not the best wood carving tip, but still a good tip for, well, just about everything you're gonna do with a bushcraft knife. Let's just put it right up front. This is a bushcraft knife, but it's different from the other bushcraft knives in that you're not going to, uh, well, I wouldn't recommend, I won't say you can't rely on this by itself, you certainly can, but I would recommend that this be a backup or secondary cutting tool to an ax or a saw. This is not the one knife you take out and expect to be a survival do-all knife. It's not the Garberg, let's put it that way. But it has some distinct advantages over the Garberg that you will see in a few minutes time. And the last thing I'll see, show you is that it has a very, very sharp spine. So unlike some of the entry level mores, it's not left unfinished, it was finished with a sharp edge. So that's of course some, one of the things we want on bushcraft knives. That was probably the only thing missing off the bore, uh, the more Outdoor 2000 was that it was rounded. I will tell you the more Outdoor 2000 is much more comfortable on your thumb when you're carving than this knife is, but of course you can't scrape with it. So you have to have some other means of scraping wood, fat wood, ferrocerium, whatever it is. All right, let's bring another knife in to compare with. All right, the first knife I'll bring in for comparison is the uh, Companion Heavy Duty. And yes, this is the old school robust, but it's identical to the Companion Heavy Duty except for the color of the handle. So what can you see by comparison? Obviously, the Companion HD has a much thinner blade, especially towards the tip. It's also a much thicker blade at three millimeters. So yeah, it is thinner, more heavy duty in that respect, much better, I wouldn't say much better carver, just a better carver. Much better is relative to how much carving you're going to do and how fine you want the tip to be. But you can see that it is uh, a thinner tip on it. And you can see it also th from spine to edge, it's thinner in that way. But when you look at them, let's see, I don't know how well I can make this work. Um, very much same overall size. You know, there, there's not much difference in length, well, actually very little difference in length, if any at all, in terms of length of the blade, length of the handle, that type of thing. All right, so that's the HD. Let's put that aside. All right, the Mora Bushcraft Black. And I still think this is my favorite of all the Mora knives for bushcraft. But we're gonna talk more about that in a minute because I think at the end of the day, the two that, well, I will call my favorites are these two. And I'll, I'll explain myself in a minute, as I mentioned. Once again, Heavier duty steel on the Bushcraft Black, although thinner from spine to edge, finer at the tip, better for fine wood carving. But that's about it. Everything else, well, actually, let's just see. I would say that the Bushcraft Black has a millimeter or two length over top of the uh, Garberg, or not Garberg, Cansball. But one of the things is it's just a different shape handle. So you really can't take that uh, little bit of extra length on the Bushcraft Black and call it an advantage one way or another. Heavier steel, thinner tip. Good knife, really good knife. In fact, I really still like this one. Last knife to bring in will be the Garberg. All right, one last knife to compare against the Cansball, and that is, of course, the Garberg. And these knives often are compared one against the other by a lot of reviewers, and I can understand why they have a similar appearance, and that's about all they really have is a similar appearance. I guess where they are most the same is in the handle itself. You can see the handle shape is, I'm gonna say the handle sheath is identical in every way, but there are some differences even there. Whereas the Cans Ball has the hard plastic and soft rubber overmold, 
The CANS bolt does not. It does not have the soft rubber overmold. Bit of a miss, I think, because that would have made it just that much more nice to hold in the hand, but not that it hurts it any. It's just, I think it would have been just a little bit nicer with that soft overmold. And of course, after that, they there's a lot of differences. Maybe the length. The length of the blades are identical, as you can see. Blade profile is pretty close one to the other in terms of height from spine to edge and the fact that they both have the same drop point. But after that, everything else is different. Start with, look at the difference in the thickness of this spine or the material, the blades themselves. Considerably thicker on the Garberg. We knew that, of course. And the other thing, of course, is that the Garberg does not thin out in the forward half of the blade. It, and you'll see in a minute in demonstrations, it's nowhere near as slicey as a result of that. The last difference, of course, is that the Garberg is a full tang knife with a protruding pommel. The cans ball is not a full tang knife. Now, I don't consider that a handicap in any way because the other mores are not full tang knives either. And I have full confidence in them and use them. All right, let's talk about the cans ball and whether or not it truly is a bushcraft knife. So first off, the answer is to that question is yes, it is. But the reason it is is a little different than it is from the other knives. So with the other knives that I have reviewed from Mora, they are all bushcraft knives but what they do better than this knife is that they're better at carving wood. They're better at wood processing. They're a little bit better at splitting wood open. But what they're not better than the cans ball is, is that being slicey. And the advantage of having a slicey knife is an area that we have not talked about in use of bushcraft knives. And of course that is meal preparation, game preparation, cleaning fish, cleaning rabbits, cleaning deer, clearing whatever it is and preparing those meats for the meal or slicing vegetables or anything else, this is where the cans ball shines over the other knives for a couple of reasons. One, of course, the very thin stock, as we talked about when I first opened the video, and the forward part of the knife where it thins out makes us a great slicing knife. Now, that's not to say you can't do wood prep, fire prep with this knife. It's just that you should be taken to reason what it is you're doing with it. So I am going to baton this knife in a few minutes time, but the wood that I'll baton with a knife like this is going to be a lot smaller than I would do with the other knives. So that's why this is a bushcraft knife. It'll do all the tasks the other knives will Maybe not as heavy duty with the heavier pieces of wood, but what this will do that the other knives won't do is slice, or not, won't do as well is slice, and that's what we'll demonstrate in a moment. Okay, so the piece of wood that I'm going to baton is inch, I'm going to say inch and a quarter in diameter, at least at this end. This end, it starts to well out, and there is a huge knot, but I'm not going to try and push this knife through the knot. I'll go down the side of the knot as best I can. I think I can do this. And uh, this is definitely as large a piece of wood as I would baton with the cans ball. I think it probably could withstand larger pieces of wood because even though it is thin, it is high. That means it has a lot of strength built into it. It's just that I don't see the reason why I would want to do that. This is not the only cutting tool I brought out. So yeah, let's just go with that. All right, so. My new cutting block is a little unstable, I'm finding. And here's the thing that I'm seeing right away is because of the thinner steel, it's not prying the wood apart. Like you do with the wider Scandi grinds. I mean, it certainly split the wood. As you can see, oh, I did go through knots. Did I ever? Okay, so it did it withstand it. Let's just have a look. No glinting off of the edge, no rolling, no chipping, no damage. But having said that, that was as far as I would go in terms of uh, batoning a piece of wood. I, I went through some knots I had no intention of going through, but it withstood it and uh, better than maybe I even anticipated would. And by the way, this is seasoned maple. Okay, I'll split these down. Actually, I might just choose something else to split so I can further avoid the knots and do some 10 peg demonstrations. 
All right, in full disclosure, I actually did end up splitting that same piece of wood out, but I did it with the Garberg, just so I could get four splits off the same piece of wood that I could do some other tasks with. Uh, here's what I'm gonna say. I didn't do this on camera, and maybe I missed an opportunity there, but by batoning the Garberg right after having batoned the cans ball, you can definitely feel the difference between the two knives. This knife was like a, the Garberg that is, was like a wedge going through it. The wood just parted way with, a, with very little resistance. And of course it is that much thicker, that much stronger, but it's also due to the fact that it has the full length Scandi. Yes, this does have a full length Scandi, but it is thinner overall and thinner again towards the front. So the wood wanted to stay against the sides of the metal, would not uh, come apart quite as quickly, but okay. So that aside, let's just take this one and I'm going to do a little cross batoning. I'm not doing heavy duty work, just a couple of little taps like that. And clean the notch out, L7 with ease. This just rolls into that notch and cleans it out so, so well. All right, so again, in full disclosure, this is not the tent peg I was just working on. It's another one of the splits from that same piece of wood, but look at the wicket knots at that end. And the, had I been notching at this end, which I did on the tent peg, then I would have had it been put in the point on this end. So you can see why I chose to not give that a try. All right, but it's the same wood, same split, just the straighter end of the two. So let's just do that using my reverse grip and my chest lever cut. Let's put a point on this stick. And that is where this knife just excels. Bites into that wood with real authority. My recommendation, of course, is stay back here where the blade is at its thickest and you get the, can take most advantage of that Scandinavian grind. But what's that, four or five different uh, strokes and I have a really, really pointy little stick. All right, so that's a couple more demonstrations. Now let's go on to feather sticking. So another task for bushcraft knife, of course, is feather sticking. And uh, okay, this is again, another one of those splits, looking it over for knots, no knots, but there is quite a bit of a twist in it. I don't think that'll have too much of an impact. Let's just see what happens. Oh my goodness. I don't think I kept it on the stick, but wow. So it, of course I've used this knife and, I, and I've used the Mora Outdoor 2000. So I know exactly what it's capable of, as you can see, some very thin curls is what it's capable of. But every time I pick it up after having used another knife, that's when I start to really appreciate just what a good feather. Wow, that's like paper. Wow. So what I thought I would do by comparison, bring out the Bushcraft Black and just run it that down the knife or down the stick a few times. And right away it meets more resistance. Doing a good job, don't get me wrong. It just, I have to adjust the angle a little bit higher to get the same bite and then I meet more resistance going down the wood. Back to the cans ball. Oh my goodness. Yeah, if you're looking for a knife, one of Mora's knives to feather stick with, this is the one. Any of their thinner knives for that matter, but this is definitely the better of the feather stickers in their lineup. I'm just taking it slow here, working on the stick. I can relax the knife way down, almost flat it feels like, and it just wants to continue to peel off little, little tiny curls. And if I start angling the knife a little bit, the, cur the curls will curl away. If I go the other way, they curl in the other direction. Now you can spend a lot more time on a feather stick than I am and I'm just gonna brush this one up a little bit just to make it a little thicker. 
But I would say with a little bit more work, I could have had a rig, really big bushy feather stick, two or three of those, and I have everything I need to start a fire. Now, scraping. So there are three types of scraping that I would consider using a bushcraft knife for. One, of course, is wood itself. Let's see if we can create some fuzz using the spine, and of course we can. So the fuzz I'm creating off of this piece of maple is by itself, get it off the stick, fine enough to take sparks from a ferrocerium rod. We'll just set that aside. How about a piece of fatwood? By the way, this is just a piece of birch bark on the ground right here to catch everything with. And of course, no question about it. Very, very sharp spine, as you can see. Now, ferrocerium rod. I do want to make sure, oh yeah, it's clean, it's ready. And that's all there was to it. Okay, I did say scraping was the last task, but actually no, I can't end this video without demonstrating just what the cans ball is capable of doing in terms of slicing. I did say where this knife excels over all the others is food preparation. Well, I'm about to have some lunch and I might as well show you how well this will slice my lunch. All right, so what is the slicing test? How about a tomato? Tomatoes are notorious for slicing. If your knife is not sharp, if your knife is not thin enough, it tends to push through tomato and make quite a bit of a mess. So I actually have three knives I'm going to compare. I am going to use the Garberg just to show you what that's like for food prep. I will be using the cans bowl, but I thought I'd bring out a really slicey camp knife. And this is the Firebox Stove Folding Chef's Knife. And this is designed specifically for that. Actually, let's just pull that stem out so it's not in the way at all. And how about this? Look at that. This is what, let's see how thin I can get it. Oh my goodness. Yeah, see this is what a thin knife can do. Thin and sharp. We'll put that knife aside. Now, what about the Garberg? Let's just give the Garberg... <laughs> it's actually a lot of resistance. And if I wasn't putting this forward pushing motion, well, let's just... Yeah, I can't, I can't even push down on the tomato. It won't even break this. Oh, there it goes. It breaks the surface. Just to give you an idea. I mean, it's still doing the job, isn't it? But it's just not as nice as the firebox stove one was. Well, what about the cans ball? First, I should probably clean it off a little bit on my pant leg. Watch this. I mean, that is almost as good a slicer. Well, maybe just as good a slicer as the firebox stove. Look at that. I'm thinking that's pretty thin. It's something that the... Garberg can't do, but the forward part of the cans ball can do better than any other knife in my collection, with the exception of that firebox stove knife. All right, this is all going to be part of my lunch today. All right, now we can wrap this video up. All right, let's wrap this video up with a few closing comments for the Mora Cans Ball. Right off the top, of course, yes, this is a bushcraft knife. You just have to take into considering what type of bushcraft tasks you're putting this to. I would look at this in terms of my overall general field knife that I'm going to do woodcrafting with at least feather sticking and some fine carving to a certain degree and food preparation. So if your tasks involve more along the line of food preparation and less along the line of splitting and carving wood, then this is the better of all the more knives for that matter. If you're looking for something that's a bit more heavy duty, capable of splitting bigger pieces of wood and taking more hard use, then maybe Maybe the Garberg or the Heavy Duty Companion or the Bushcraft Black is the better choice. But for everything else, this is just the better cutter. So once again, it depends on what tasks you're going to be using your Bushcraft knife for. If you choose to take this one with you, which of course I do and love and always have with the Outdoor 2000, I'm going to take a bigger knife with it or a hatchet or something else that I can use to split wood down if I'm doing fire prep. All right, I think that kind of sums it up. If you have any other thoughts on the can bowl in relation to bushcraft or the other knives that I brought out today or in any of the other knives Mora puts out as well, then please put those comments or those questions if you have any in the comments section below. As I mentioned, all the specifications
specifications for this knife will be in the video description as well as links to wild med kits where I got this knife. Now I am going to tell you they're not going to be carrying them any longer but I think it's worth going there just to show them a little support especially if you're interested in uh, first aid kits and I did mention I'll be reviewing the first aid kit they sent me. Um, soon let's put it that way soon but these are readily available from a great deal of sources so i'm sure you can find a place if you're looking to purchase these knives all right that's it that's all i have for you today get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference bye for now